It's one of the saddest realities of our world that people go missing all the time. There are stories daily and posters in every town, and often when a person does vanish without a trace, we fear the worst. But every once in a while, people do turn up again. Sometimes it takes decades, from a girl who saw her own face on a milk carton to a man with a 23-year-long amnesia, here are 20 missing people who were eventually found. Number 20. Bonnie Lohman A girl finds her photo as a missing girl, then discovers her life has been a lie. Yes, really. Imagine sitting down to eat your cereal one morning and seeing your own face on a milk carton next to the words, missing child. That's surely going to make you wonder what in the actual heck is going on. And it's exactly what happened to Bonnie Lohman when she was seven years old. At the time, she didn't understand what it meant, but was obviously intrigued by the whole thing. Bonnie asked her so-called stepfather about it, and he did a slightly strange thing. He actually let her keep the picture. This action was what would eventually lead to the whole case unraveling in the future. What seems to have happened was that when Bonnie was small, she had been in the care of her birth father, but her mother had taken her and run away when Bonnie was just three years old. Then she and her mother and stepfather moved around a lot after that. So when Bonnie took the picture from the milk carton, it set in motion a series of events that would change everything for the little girl. She had been sworn to secrecy by her stepfather father about the picture, but she had accidentally left it in a toy box that she had taken to a neighbor's house. They saw the picture and called the police immediately. Bonnie would then be reunited with her father. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Melvin Upoff and Jacqueline Raines Crackman. One day back in the fall of 1965, a man by the name of Melvin Upoff and a woman named Jacqueline Raines Crackman left their respective families and simply never returned. Their families heard nothing more from them, even though they had both apparently left behind children, and it was a massive mystery and nobody seems to have any answers. Upoff had taken only his coin collection and his car on that fateful day. Crackman had taken her clothing, and both had seemed to have left deliberately deliberately, but without any explanation and without leaving any word as to where they might be found. The authorities who looked into the disappearances concluded that the pair had left their Nebraska homes and run away together. But there was no evidence anywhere of where they might have gone, nor did it seem as though there was any evidence of foul play. There was just simply nothing. Upoff's 1954 Oldsmobile would never be located, and his family had him declared legally dead in the 1970s. The families would wonder, without any conclusion for over 40 years what had been the fate of their loved ones, and the stories captured the interest to filmmakers and a further investigation occurred as the families tried to gain some closure for themselves. Number 18. Lucy Ann Johnson Sometimes missing people do turn up again, like Lucy Ann Johnson, who went missing from her home in British Columbia in Canada in September of 1961. She was then only reported missing by her husband in May of 1965, and this in and of itself is a rather puzzling thing. Did he not notice she was gone for four years? Was there something distinctly fishy about it all? Obviously, the police thought it was rather strange as well, and they believed that her husband had likely done her in and was definitely involved in her disappearance. The police interrogated her husband and even dug up their garden in search of her body, but the whereabouts of Lucy Ann Johnson continued to be a mystery. Without any leads, the case would go cold. Her husband eventually remarried and ultimately died in the 1990s. And then, out of the blue, a full 52 years later, after her disappearance, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police highlighted the cold case in their Missing of the Month series. This reignited Johnson Johnson's daughter's own investigation into her mother's disappearance. She dug out the old paperwork and then traced some of her mother's family to Yukon. The investigation focused on that area, and then a woman came forward and said that she was Lucy Ann's daughter. 
her mother, the missing woman, was actually still alive and living in the area. The mystery had been solved. She said that she had left her husband because he was abusive, and she had tried to take her children, but he had not allowed it. She would then be reunited with her daughter at the age of 77. Number 17. Petra Pazitka so, what happens when a murder victim rocks up alive and, well, 30 years after they were believed to be killed? Well, it doesn't happen often, but for Petra Pazitka, this is exactly how it all went down. In 1984, the young woman disappeared from a town in Germany. She had failed to turn up at her brother's birthday party and was then reported missing by the family. This would trigger a massive search by police, but it turned up no clues as to what had actually happened to her. The following year, an investigation TV show would be brought in to try and uncover some more information, and this is when the police said that they were acting on the assumption that she had been murdered. At around this time, a suspect in another murder case actually confessed to this killing, but no body was ever found. The case then went cold and was officially closed in 1989. Then, in 2015, something weird happened. A woman reported a burglary in Dusseldorf, and although she had initially given police a different name, when they asked for her ID, she confessed that she was actually Pazitka. Now, she said that she had been living without any official documents under a false identity for 30 years. She didn't give any details as to why she had chosen to live like this, or indeed why she had disappeared in the first place, but she didn't want to get in contact with anyone from her past. Number 16. Lula Gillespie Miller in her late 20s, Lula Gillespie Miller gave birth to a third child, had second thoughts about everything in her entire life, signed over custody of all three children to her parents, and then disappeared into the night. She left her home in Indiana and was not seen again until she suddenly resurfaced in Texas 42 years after she had disappeared. The case was cold, but in January of 2014, a policeman took interest in the case and went out with the tiny bits of evidence that he had all to track down what had happened to the woman. And he actually found her. Lula Gillespie Miller at this point was 69 years old and admitted to the police that she had, in 1974, left her family in Laurel, Indiana and disappeared. As she had not in fact committed any crimes, they kept her new identity private, but she did agree for her details to be given to her daughter, who was planning to make contact with the mother anyways. Number 15. Judith Bellow the thing that's becoming apparent with many of these missing people, who then turn up decades later, is that they really aren't all that keen on being found in the first place. Then they really don't want to tell their story to some journalists and have all their personal lives raked over in the public arena. And that's fair enough. People have a right to their privacy, even if they have been presumed dead. 18 years previously, a woman named Judith Bello went missing in Stanwood, Washington. She left behind her husband and two children and simply vanished without a trace. Now, it's fair to say that people believe the worst that had happened to her, but then in 2011, she actually turned up in Fontana, California, and yes, she was alive. Equipped with a new identity, a new family, and a new life, but still very much alive. Her original family were delighted to hear the news, of course. Judith actually declined to allow any reporters to poke around in her life, and the police stated that she had done nothing wrong and would therefore also be leaving this woman alone. Number 14. Edgar Latulip of the 70,000 to 80,000 people who are reported missing in Canada every year, most are found within seven days of their disappearance. But there are a few who are never seen again. And sadly, that usually means that they're no longer walking the earth. But very, very occasionally, a person missing and presumed dead can actually turn up alive and well. One such individual was a man by the name of Edgar Latulip. He had psychological problems, and his family said that although he was an adult, he was functioning at the level of a child. He disappeared all the way back in 1986 under circumstances that would suggest that he had died and left everyone fearing for the worst. And as more time went by, the more likely that this sad outcome had seemed. 
But then a full 30 years after the initial investigation into his vanishing, a man would come forward and claim that he was in fact the missing man, Edgar Latula. There had been no suspected sightings or any movement in the case at all for many, many years, so it was quite the surprise for everyone. It turns out that old Edgar had sustained a head injury, which had severely affected his memory. He had no recollection of who he was or where he'd come from, so he basically adopted a different identity and remained unaware that people were actually looking for him. In 2016, he found some of his memory returning, which included his name, and that's when he decided to seek help. A social worker did an internet search and discovered his story. He did a DNA test to confirm his identity and was finally found again after one of the longest missing person cases that police in the area had ever known. He would then be reunited with his mother. Number 13. Carlos de Salazar now, if you go through all the trouble of running off to become a hermit in a different country, the last thing that you really want is people finding you. That's just kind of rude. Carlos Sanchez Ortiz de Salazar went missing all the way back in 1995 when he was just 26 years old. He had vanished without a trace and eventually, in 2010, was officially declared dead. But then, seemingly out of nowhere, he would be discovered by a couple of mushroom pickers to be living on a nature preserve in northern Tuscany in Italy. The former doctor had suffered from severe depression when he had left his home in Seville and had completely disappeared. His parents naturally feared the worst when they had no word from him for 20 long years, so when people found him living in the forest, that's when they contacted his parents, but by the time they had flown out to Italy, Carlos had moved on again. His parents expressed relief that he was all right and said that they just wanted to know that he was okay. Number 12. Bo Bergdahl The story of Bo Bergdahl took a few twists and turns before it all got figured out, but it is something of a weird one. Bo Bergdahl was a U.S. soldier who had vanished while serving in Afghanistan in 2009, and it was later discovered that he had actually been captured by the Taliban and was a prisoner of war. Five years after that, in 2014, President Obama secured the release of Bergdahl. After this time, more would be revealed about his disappearance and capture. As it transpired, he had apparently left his post prior to being caught by the Taliban, as he had been unhappy with the way that things were being run at his own operation operating base and intended to trek to another and tell the general there about the issue. But he was soon captured before any of that could occur and wound up in a Taliban prison. After he was released from the prison, he then pled guilty to charges by the U.S. Army and was not sentenced to prison time, but actually received a dishonorable discharge, a $1,000 fine, and his rank was reduced from sergeant to private. Number 11. Bakradin Kakamov this guy was a Soviet soldier who was fighting on the battlefield of Afghanistan all the way back in 1980. A different war, but the same place. He was out doing all the war when he disappeared and was injured and presumed dead. But then, more than 30 years later, he actually turned up again. Kakamov was just 20 years old when he was last seen serving with the 101st Motorized Rifle Unit stationed near Heret. A black and white photograph showed the young man in a Soviet Army uniform around the time that he vanished. He had long been presumed gone forever, but during an investigation by Russian officials who were trying to trace the soldiers that remained missing following the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan, it seems that he had actually been discovered. He was alive and well, apparently, and his story went something along the lines of being rescued from the battlefield by local residents after he was seriously wounded during the conflict. He then stayed with the man who had helped him and learned medical skills. He married a local Afghan woman and settled down in the area area. When he resurfaced in 2013, he was a man in his 50s, living as a nomadic sheik and working as a healer using traditional medicine. Apparently, more than 200 Soviet soldiers from the 1979 to 89 war in Afghanistan are still missing. Most are presumed to be dead. The Committee for International Soldiers has tracked down some 29 former soldiers. Some have returned to Russia, and others have actually stayed in Afghanistan. And they say that the search will continue until every missing man has been accounted for. Number 10. Nguyen Tai Van 
Back in 1992, 16-year-old Van lived in Hanoi in Vietnam with her family. She was top in her class in high school, but she also liked to go out partying with her friends. One night, she stayed out way past her curfew and did not arrive home until after midnight. Her mother, who was very displeased by this behavior from her daughter, did a slightly bizarre thing. She locked her out of the house and wouldn't allow her to come in. It was after that incident that night that Van disappeared. Her family reported their daughter missing to the local police and a search would take place, but Van had vanished without a trace. It was not until 21 years later that Van had appeared again. Her uncle was at a local market buying vegetables when he was approached by a woman who asked him about the house that Van had lived in with her family. She said that she was their missing daughter. She told the story of what had happened to her that night. She had gone back out with her friends to sing at a karaoke bar, and then they had gone to another town where they had met a woman. The next thing she knew, Van had woken up in a house in China, and they had been kidnapped and forced to marry old Chinese men. She was beaten and held captive, and tried to escape many times, but eventually found a man who helped her to get away, and finally made it all the way back to Hanoi to be reunited with her family. Number 9. Steve Carter Steve Carter had grown up with a lot of questions about where he'd come from. He had been adopted as a baby, but knew nothing else about what had happened in the years of his life prior to that event. He decided to go ahead and conduct an internet quest to see if he could even uncover some more information, and what he found became quite a shock. During his search, he found a photograph of a missing child and a mock-up of what that baby might look like today, and to his surprise, it turned out to be him. The story that accompanied the images was about a woman who had taken her baby from their home in Hawaii when he was just six months old. His father and his mother's partner became frantic when the mother failed to return for several weeks, and he then reported the pair as missing. Steve Carter's father never knew what actually happened to him, and he spent a year and a half driving around in search for them everywhere. But Carter's mother had taken him to a stranger's house and given a fake name and date of birth for the baby. She had shortly afterwards been taken into the psychiatric hospital, and the baby was then taken into protective custody. His mother vanished and has never been found. Carter was placed in an orphanage and was adopted when he was a little boy by a loving family who brought him up in New Jersey. After he discovered the story online, Carter then took a DNA test that confirmed that he was the missing child from the website and he got in contact with his lost family. Number 8. Savannah Todd after the breakup of their relationship, Benjamin Harris Todd had won a custody battle over the care of his daughter, Savannah Todd. He had claimed that his wife, Dorothy Barnett, had been bipolar and abusive, but then suddenly, Savannah disappeared. It's every parent's nightmare, but she had seemingly vanished without a trace. It seems hard to believe that this is even possible, but her mother, Barnett, had essentially kidnapped her and then left the country. They had traveled from the United States to Queensland and Australia and changed their names. Savannah grew up as Samantha, and she had believed that her stepfather was her real father and had no idea of the truth. It would be many years later when her mother had been drinking heavily that she actually confessed about taking her from her father's custody. Savannah's friends then looked up the story online and contacted her real father, as well as the authorities in the United States of America. Soon after, Barnett was arrested, and Savannah discovered the whole story for herself. Number 7. Timothy Carney Timothy Carney would be reported missing back in 2004 by his roommate. He was not seen again for seven years, but in 2011, an organization known as the Kristen Foundation that looks for missing persons, well, they found him. But the thing was, he kinda didn't want to be found. Carney's parents had spent years in the quest for answers about their son's disappearance. There had been huge billboard campaigns to try and get information to help uncover the mystery. Once his case was closed, it still left a lot of unanswered questions. Yes, he had been found, but no, he had not returned to the bosom of his family, although they know where he is. They believe that he's under the control of a religious organization known as Gospel Outreach, which is led by 
Jim Lethbridge. They think that their son may have actually been influenced not to make contact with his family. This is a technique commonly used by cults in order to isolate their victims and prevent them from leaving. Carney's mother believed that at the time of her son's disappearance, he had been a member of the gospel outreach, and the leaders were becoming very controlling, insisting on accompanying him when he went anywhere. But despite him being found alive and well, he has still had no contact with his family, although they're happy to know that he is still on Earth. Number 6. Steven Stainer in 1972, when Steven Stainer was in the second grade, he was walking home from school one afternoon when he disappeared, apparently from the face of the earth. His parents were naturally absolutely desperate and searched everywhere, putting up posters, but nobody came forward with any information, and he stayed lost for seven long years. What happened to him was a harrowing and terrible experience that would change him forever. Steven was actually abducted by a convicted pedophile who told the little boy that his parents no longer wanted him and that he had adopted him and that Stephen should call him dad. He then suffered years of torture and abuse, was given drugs and alcohol, and even beaten relentlessly. When Stephen was 14 years old, his abductor took another victim, a young boy by the name of Timmy White, and it was this that instigated the escape plan that the two enacted. They managed to get away and hitchhiked 40 miles to a police station, and there they were both reunited with their families, but Stephen continued to struggle understandably with the trauma of his experiences. Number 5. Arthur Gerald Jones here we have a man who faked his own death and actually got away with it for 32 years. That's quite a tricky thing to do. I mean, it seems that way in the movies anyways. Arthur Gerald Jones had racked up a massive pile of gambling debts and disappeared all the way back in 1979, leaving his wife and children behind and was never heard from again. In fact, he had been declared legally dead by a court in Illinois in 1986. But for a dead guy, he certainly seemed to be kind of alive looking when he was found in Las Vegas in 2011. He had changed his name and even gotten himself a bunch of fake documents and someone else's social security number. And then he lived his new fake life for over 30 years before the FBI finally caught up with him. Ultimately, Jones was caught when he tried to renew a fake Nevada driver's license, and the computer system picked up that something was wrong and it got flagged. This is how more and more cases seem to be getting solved these days. As databases improve and more and more things become connected, it's harder and harder to stay hidden. Number 4. Julian Hernandez when Julian Hernandez was just five years old, his father took him from his home in Alabama and raised him under a new identity. For 14 years, the boy knew nothing of what had actually happened, and his mother had no idea where he was. It was only when Hernandez applied for college as an 18-year-old that the truth began to unravel. Julian's father had taken him away from his mother when he was little and told him that he had been abandoned by her and that she was an unloving mother. He had kept him from a relationship with her for the whole of his growing up, but for Julian, he held no resentment towards his father, who had loved him and taken care of him as his whole life. It was, he said, because of his father, that he had done so well at school and had ambitions to go to college. But that process had thrown up a problem with a social security number, there go those databases again, and the whole story of Julian's life had begun to unravel. His father was then arrested, and despite his son requesting that his father serve no jail time, he would be sentenced to four years in prison for the the abduction of his son. Number 3. Elizabeth Smart the terrifying abduction of Elizabeth Smart was just the beginning of a nine-month-long ordeal that she suffered at the hands of her captors. She would be taken at knife point by the pair who broke into her home in Salt Lake City, Utah in the dead of the night, and her sister was in the room as it happened and thought that she recognized the man's voice but pretended to be asleep for the fear of them seeing that she was aware of them. They held the child captive just 18 miles away from her home, and despite the FBI hunt for Elizabeth, it actually took months before they had any solid leads on her whereabouts. The pair of abductors held the girl captive in a camp in the woods where she was subjected to very terrible things. Then one day, Elizabeth's sister suddenly remembered who the voice was. She believed it to be a man that the family had employed for a day to fix the roof and rake up some leaves. They worked with a sketch artist and the image would be released to the public. It was shown on national television programs and soon, the relatives of the man recognized him and provided photos. Then it was just 
just a brief time until he was spotted with the other abductor and Elizabeth. People recognized him and reported him to the police. Elizabeth would then be rescued and her abductors were arrested. Number 2. Danielle Kramer 15-year-old Danielle Kramer was missing for almost a year when she turned up, locked in a small hidden room under a staircase in the house of a local neighbor. Two people would be arrested at the scene, and Kramer was rescued. It turned out that one of the people who appeared to have been holding her captive had actually been a business associate of her family, and had therefore seemed as though he might be a friend to the troubled teenager when she went looking for help after she ran away. All of the evidence would suggest that things were very dubious indeed, not to mention the fact that Danielle had been hidden away, although it did not appear as though she had been kept in that hidden room permanently. Police did believe, however, that she had been influenced by the two adults, who had certainly not done the correct thing by keeping a young girl hidden from her family. The whole thing was shrouded in a lot of mystery. Number 1. Gabrielle Nagui in January of 1987, a man named Gabriel Nagui, who was a husband and father of two children, called his wife to say that he would be home for lunch, but he never showed up. His car was later found abandoned on the side of the road, and he took money out of his bank account, and that was the last time that he was seen for the next 23 years. Eventually, an investigator tracked him down through a Medicare record. It turned out to be a bit like the plot of a movie. Nagui had suffered from amnesia and had no recollection of his previous life whatsoever. He had simply spent his time since doing odd jobs to get by and living on the streets using a different name. After a while, a church had taken him in and he had been helped to get some medical care, which is how they figured out his real name and eventually solved this very strange case. Well, that wasn't exactly a barrel of laughs, but some of it was at least interesting. Which of these cases had you the most surprised? As always, let me know your ideas in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. As long as I don't disappear.